Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Create, Learn, Implement, aka CLI Podcast with myself, Koyeta. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. It's been consistent. It's spring. It's consistently uh, great weather. And I am grateful to be here and to uh, be sitting down with this amazing woman. Okay, y'all, Jackie Clark is a creative director of events, sponsorships, uh, brand activation, and the founder of The Well Connected. And she is a well-rounded woman. You will get to know her on the other side. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions like, how do I record an episode? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen. How do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors too. So you can get paid to podcast. So when I thought about doing, um, starting a podcast, I had no idea how it worked. I don't know how I became across anchor, but I did. And it was free and it was a hundred percent easy to use. And I love to use it to connect to my audience. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Ladies, let's be real for a second. Are you trying to build your business alone and realize that you need company, you need support, and really your business is stagnant? Well, join the Close Friends Challenge that I'm hosting June 20th on the ground. All you have to do is get on my Instagram and DM the word friends. This will allow you to join the challenge starting June 20th and join our bomb community of ladies who are ready to offer support and grow their business right alongside you. You don't have to be alone in this process. Being alone is an option. Being alone is a choice. Hit me up at I am Coyetta. DM the word friends to get on my close friends list and join the close friends challenge starting June 20th. You don't want to miss this. We will be taking simple steps to help your business grow. Simple steps to skyrocket your business. Simple steps to get you the results you desire. All the link is in the description box. I hope to see you there. All right, let me. All right, everybody, let's welcome our beautiful guest, Jackie Clark, who is a creative director, brand activator, and creator of Well Connected Public uh, Relations Agency. Jackie, welcome. How are you? Hey, I'm well. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. We had a chance to do a little kiki in before we started. So (laughs) (laughs) the kiki was real. The kiki was very real. (laughs) Okay. So for those of you who do not know who Jackie, Jackie Clark is, please do a little intro for us, Jackie. Tell us a little bit more about who you are. For sure. So I'm Jackie Clark, founder of The Well Connected, which is pretty much a creative support agency. So we used to be full line or frontline public relations. But as life has happened um, prior to COVID, uh, we've kind of started switching our direction to be more of a support agency. We get called a lot to support for media events. Which I love. Um, We do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 
Okay. Um, yeah, so the agency really has moved into the direction of a support system. So we do a lot of virtual events for athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs. Uh, we produce a lot of sponsorship acquisitions. So for events and such, and then we do a lot of pitch deck presentation design. So we're more in the support space now, um, but everything is still focused around public relations and communicating your brand messages and needs to your clients. Perfect. No, I was saying that I realized that there is a switch that I want to touch on uh, in a second, but let's yeah. start back with the PR portion. Um, initially, mm -hmm. what led you into the world of PR? Um, wow, that is a loaded question because I actually went to school for fashion design. I wanted to be and still have the desire to do a uh, bridal design wow. um, because I love the theatrics and the nuffness of clothes <laughs> and I love a gown. So yeah. <laughs> any chance I could wear a frock, I'm, I'm about that life, but, um, Right. I, um, during my college years, I was on the student council. Uh, so producing a lot of the Black History Month uh, productions and other school events. And then throughout my four year journey um, in the design program, I ended up on the fashion and, or sorry, the PR team for our year end fashion show and I had no idea what PR was. And so that spiraled me into kind of um, understanding and getting to know a little bit more about public relations mm -hmm. ended up securing some stuff from town shoes and Mattel and a bunch of different stuff and then my teachers of that program they were like they think I'd be really great in their event management program so I did a post-grad and that kind of catapulted um, me into the career into the PR space I knew nothing I um I knew nothing. I don't know if that's proper grammar, but I don't, I didn't know much, I will say. <laughs> and um, I kind of was just volunteering and interning. And it was crazy because I couldn't get a job because I didn't have the journalistic background. Mm -hmm. I, and none of my credentials added up, but I was able to volunteer and being a Virgo and being super social, mm -hmm. I just naturally fit in. And then it came to a point where um, I started just doing my own thing. Cause I just realized that like, the method in which these women and men were doing things just lacked creativity. Right. It lacked an authentic touch. And I'm just more about feeling it out and kind of just going with it versus trying to be like, well, this is the way we've always done it. No, yeah. it, you know, it can always be improved. And then, you know, for years just kept interning, volunteering, landed a few higher paid internships. Uh, and then it came to the point where I couldn't get a job because I was overqualified. So I went from underqualified to overqualified in a span of like five years. Wow. Um, and so I did end up going back to school for corporate comms um, in 2016 and graduated with honors, 4.0 GPA and honors, and uh, interned with a really great PR agency and just started freelancing. So since then, I still work with them. They are a partner client, I like to call them. Yeah. And yeah, I just started my own agency. So that's kind of how I fell into PR. And then the the name, The Well Connected, uh, God, I came up with that name early, maybe like 2006, seven. Yeah. Um, but it was actually The Well Connected Nobody because I was always doing events. People would see me, but people had no idea who I was. I didn't belong in the industries. And I was kind of like an anomaly. You saw me and then you didn't see me. Yeah. And then a great friend of mine, Troy Monaco had said to me one day, you're not a nobody, you're a somebody. So I dropped the nobody and then just became the well-connected. So that's kind of like the short version of how I got here. Perfect. I, I, I love that because you created an opportunity for yourself essentially. Mm. And it birthed mm. this big company um, that a lot of, a lot of people reach out to you now, uh, US, you have, you have clients worldwide. So that's really amazing that it all started with, with you. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of crazy sometimes when you think about it, it's, it's still, if you told me like 15 years ago that I'd be doing publicity, a, like a form of publicity, working with celebrities, being paid to yeah. travel and do things, I would have just told you you were lying. Cause back then I never thought that big of myself. And yeah. so to see where I am now and still see where I have the opportunity to to go is still really interesting. Wow. Well, girl, look at God, right? Look you at God. Know. You never know. Now I know that you pivoted your services, which you did allude to in the, in the um, intro. Um, mm -hmm. So what were you seeing in the market that prompted you to move in this direction? Well, um, funny enough, back even in my college days, I was always really great at presentations. Yeah. I excel visually. Okay. Um, and I could talk my way into like, into, into like anything, but 
visually I excel. And um, I realized that at one of the agencies I was interning with, they had to do reports for clients after um, a press day or something. Mm-hmm. And I was working at a film agency um, and a beauty agency. And I realized that the reports just were so blah. They lacked design. It was very basic PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. And so like, I just took it upon myself to really start upping the design cap and making sure like these presentations, these reports we're sending out are visually appealing. Mm -hmm. And even when it came to boxing up influencer gifts and stuff um, at one agency, the way I wrapped gifts from my BCBG days as a a key holder at BCBG, um, it became the standard for the agency of how we present gifting and stuff. And so through that, I realized that like people hated doing for reports, hated doing presentations. And I liked it because it really meant I didn't have to write a press release. I didn't have to pitch anybody. Jackie just had to focus on the data, give, give her what her need and give, give her what she needed and let her do her work. Yeah. And I was just like, thank God. Cause I hate pitching. I, I'm not always excited about it, especially when it comes to media. I'm just like, God, I have to send a pitch. I have to write a release. Yeah. I can do it. I just don't like to. So when I realized that this was a thing people didn't like doing. And when I bounced around to different agencies or I would volunteer somewhere and they're like, oh, I have to do this report. I'm like, oh, I'll do it. They're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And I realized that, oh my gosh, this is a thing. PR people, other people have um, more important things to do. They don't have time to sit and work on a report right now. So I decided that was going to be a thing. So the agency started realizing um, a lot of people didn't really know what wrapper fulfillment reports were or pitch decks. Um, They knew they needed some type of visual representation of their brand, but they didn't know how it would look. And so I started offering them uh, to my clients specifically after their events. I was like, well, why wouldn't we send a report citing how the, our engagement and stuff? And people were like, what? And then that kind of just catapulted where like, I would get emails and calls. I heard you do decks. I have an event. Can you produce it? Cause my sponsors need something and it just started winning. So we started kind of going in that direction when I realized that I could be an aid um, to somebody um, and, and, and do more of what I love. Mm-hmm. So that's where we kind of started pivoting. I love that. I love that. Now you offer within this new space now, three different services, digital asset uh, development, event production, sponsorship management. Sponsorship management. Um, can you tell me what each of them, like, you know, like a rough synopsis of what uh, is included in each? For sure. So digital asset development is exactly what I was talking about. So pitch deck design, yeah. presentation design. So either creating your lookbooks, um, media kits, wrap or fulfillment reports. Um, I also do social graphics for um, Instagram, like very Canva. I'm not, I'm a self-made graphic designer, as I like to call okay. it. Obviously, I have an art background being in fashion. You know how to design sketch, yeah. color theory, et cetera. But obviously not to downgrade the graphic those who study graphic design is a whole completely different art Mm -hmm. um so I say I'm self-made in that regard so any digital assets that's kind of what we create on that side of your digital communication so whether that be a communications plan for your social media for your event um you know if we're doing any uh uh, copy and write-ups and 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 sponsorship stuff that's what we'll do like writing in that regard when it comes to sponsorship management and acquisition so we uh even when I started my agency I built my brand really on the on the grounds of sponsorship I did a lot of sponsorship and one of the agencies I worked for I was like you know a promotions um publicist so I spent a lot of time working on promotions and brand acquisitions for our films and different beauty clients so in this regard if someone's looking for sponsorship for their event most of it's tied to an event not per- personal really but it's mostly tied to an event we will kind of overlook your sponsorship journey so what you're looking for what uh, whether it's monetary in kind service etc what valuation we're going to put on it what is the um the return on investment and return on engagement the kpis um we really kind of really map that out and then we go ahead and pitch these brands on your behalf so creating your sponsorship deck your one cheater um, and sending this out to see to seed fulfillment and then from the event management side we do produce in-person events i've had a number of my own events for years but prior to covid people were moving a little virtually so we did a lot of virtual events and then covid hit and then it became virtual production so we produce 
uh, your virtual event from um, platform setup to creating your graphics, communicating with your speakers, managing your schedule, um, doing any of your pre recordings and sessions in advance, and then making sure the show goes live and goes on. So that's kind of where we're at. Perfect. But you mentioned very high level concepts. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, in terms of pitch deck, media kit, sponsorship plans, how do how do each tool come into play when um, when you're working with a client? For example, you may need a pitch deck, but you may not need a media kit, or do you need both when you're working with, let's say, um, doing uh, management for a client? Uh, it really depends. Every client's different, dep yeah. uh, it dep and depends on the assets that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, any person any client any brand definitely needs a pitch deck because yeah. it's a tool a visual tool that you use to sell yourself right like yeah. yes people will go to your instagram but really a pitch deck is a con i like to look at it as a concise um document of your website or of your overall business mm -hmm. um and it highlights the key features key points and key milestones of who what you are so anybody whether you're an author whether you're a graphic designer whether you are a jewelry maker yeah. you could have a pitch deck that outlines who you are. If you are a speaker, you'll definitely want a pitch deck that outlines you know, a little bit of your history, um, you know, some of the, the outlets that you've been featured on, your key speaking points, testimonials, a couple photos and videos, just to kind of give people a more well-rounded version of who you are. It's like a digital portfolio that mm -hmm. keeps changing. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, it, uh, depending on my client's needs, like some clients come to me, they're like, um, yeah, I need a media kit, but a media kit is really, I say that's more like for influencers, right. um, you know, uh, authors will have like an author kit pretty much, but it really highlights your social, your social reach impressions, because you're reaching out to brands to be like, hey, listen, if I post on my Instagram, someone's gonna, you know, we have an open rate of this via email, or we've seen this many clicks, you know, it really highlights what your media presence is, right, okay. yeah. where, um, you know, a pitch deck again could be different or a sponsorship deck, you know, people are like, I want to get sponsors to come into my next event or my next project, mm -hmm. but they really, their deck doesn't outline any of the key things that sponsors need. Like, yeah. yes, we need to know about who you are. Yes, we, you know, we need to see some um, images, but some people's images aren't that great. Yeah. Um, the videos aren't that great. Um, and then they're missing data. They're not telling us who their audience is, their audience demographics. So, um, you know, your digital assets are really uh, individual, depending on what your need is at that current time. Right, right. Okay, so based on, um, well, for example, let, let me give you a very specific example. If I want to book more speaking events, um, how does one tool complement the other? Um, what would I need? A pitch deck, a media kit? You'll need a comp, you'll need both okay. because your pitch deck is a little bit longer um, when it comes to speak breaking out a lot of the services or sorry, the things that you speak about, highlighting more bigger reels um, and other things where your media kit is really a snapshot. And again, the media kit hot focuses specifically on your social media. Yeah. So here's our impressions. Here's all our likes across TikTok, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's going to have fewer graphics. It's really media kit. It's really anywhere between one to three pages where your pitch deck, you may want to offer, you know, I'm a speaker and I have these webinars. Here's a little snapshot of the webinars that I offer, et cetera. But most speakers also need a, um, a lot more video assets as well. You'll need a speaker reel. Um, of, hey, my name is Jackie Clark. You know, this is who I am. You need like, you know, a 15 second, a 30 second and a two minute speaker reel that really speak to the value of what you do. If you've gone to events before, sorry, if you've spoken at events in the past, mm -hmm. you are gonna wanna put a sizzle reel together of, of just highlighted clips of you at different events leading talking because again it's all in your marketing it's your it's pretty much your brand commercial right right so um you'll need a few assets and i have um i have this um course that i i've taught a couple times um at for in-person events and i'm looking to do it digitally now yeah. but it's really talking about developing your assets your so it's called the bolt and you know speakers authors entrepreneurs beauty experts influencers whoever you want to be mm -hmm. you need a certain category of things proper photos j um, um pngs not jpegs you need high-rise logos you need a professional 
bio, a short form and a long form. And when I mean professional, I don't mean when I was 12, I grew up here and I sang in Patti LaBelle's church. That, that, that's a biography. No one needs that. No one yeah. wants that. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could include a biography in case you are pitching to media and they want more insights on you, but you know, you need a professional bio. Jackie Clark is a professional, you know, publicist, 15 year, da, 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 da. like what is your actual accolades? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of things people need that they don't have that they need, they should have literally sitting in their vault because pitching yourself is crucial. Right. Absolutely. And it's really all about communication in your industry. So why mm-hmm. is it, is, why is it important that we learn how to communicate effectively? Well, because it's your first, it's most of the time, it's your first, uh, introdu- someone's first introduction to you. Um, and, you know, communicating clearly who you are, yeah. um, it concisely lets people know that you're to the point that you're direct and they can kind of get to you, get a greater understanding of you and get intrigued quickly. Mm-hmm. And if they want more information, then that's when they can visit your website or go through your pitch deck and whatnot. But I get emails from people, you don't even address me correctly. Um, it's not even a hi, good afternoon, or hello. It's uh, check out my music, or mm-hmm. I need your services. Where's the hello? Yeah. Where's the, who are you? What is your name? What are you doing? There's like communication etiquette. There is a lack, um, especially whether it be whether it be a DM, whether it be an email, there's a lack of professionalism and people just think spamming you with their music and I'm, I'm, I'm throwing shade at artists right now, but just spamming me with a link of your music or a link to your YouTube video for your podcast or for your YouTube channel without any introduction, without any, hey, I thought this may be interesting for you. Check it out or please show some love. You know, you got to be very mindful of um, in, intru, intru, intruding, intruding, sorry, on people's space. Yeah. Um, and people can get offended by that. And, you know, you never know who pe- people might just be turned off by the way you email them and never want to work with you. That's true. Has there ever been a situation, though, that you've received something um, good, perhaps in a poor presentation and you decided to move forward? Yeah, of course. Like I have a habit of I believe in just, I'll look at all my emails and I will always respond. Sometimes I forget uh, it happens, but most of the time I will respond and with a yes, no, or I can't help you, or I'll give honest criticism or feedback. Like, Hey, you know, this is great. But next time when you're approaching people, here's a few key things to just make of note. And I'm nice enough to share that because I hated one thing I hated about the media industry in particular is if you're not interested in the pitch, just say, hey, thanks, this doesn't fit. Instead of me emailing you 30 times and then you get mad, please remove me from your email list. Like just say you weren't interested the first time. Yeah. Um, I hate emails being left on deaf ears. So I will always respond and give feedback because, you know, that's, you won't grow unless somebody shows you, right? Yeah. So for me, that's kind of one of the things I've done, but I've, I've seen some emails come in, which I swear I thought were junk. (laughs) <laughs> and I was literally um, like, I haven't, <laughs> I almost did. Okay. Um, I had a, I, actually a new client that I just acquired. I got pitched to um, be a contributor in a book. And um, at first I was kind of like, wasn't sure if they were pitching me or one of my old influencers. And I almost deleted it. And I told her, I'm like, I almost threw it out, but I read it. I was like, this is interesting. And, you know, it turned from them wanting me to pay to be a, a contributor in a chapter of a book to now they're my client right amazing tables turned right and that wasn't the intention but I was like oh I'd love to be part of the book and then through further talking with the client I was just like oh this is what you're doing and I kind of offered some feedback and suggestions just giving honestly Mm -hmm. and then it it turned to can we have another meeting I talked to my team and this is what we want to do and I was just like wow cool yeah oh yeah yeah that's amazing that that's very rare though uh Yes and no. It, it, you know what? I've had it happen a few times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like um, when you just give authentically and without expectation or intention to make a sale, like if I see that there's something you can do better, or if I have an idea, because I'm not going to go ahead and pursue your idea because right. it's just it's not within my wheelhouse. Right. But if I can, if I have an idea and I can give it to you, I'm going to offer it. And people are like, "Oh my god, you should have been paid for that." You know what? That comes back 
tenfold. I've had people that haven't booked me personally mm -hmm. for something. We don't end up working together because I'm not interested in the opportunity or whatnot, but I've offered them feedback. And then months down the line, I get an email. Hey, I received, um, I was referred to you by X, Y, and Z, and they said that yep. you were very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and that's, and, and that's what it is for me. I tell people all the time, the money will come. Um, and sometimes when you just give back, um, unintended, like you just give back authentically without mm -hmm. intention, other than to just really want to see someone do the best, you will be rewarded. Absolutely. And so it's happened in a variety of either it's booked with that client. It's been a referral of some kind, or that client has, that person has come back a year later and was like, you know what? I've been following you. I loved our conversation. I actually want to work with you now. And I just believe everyone's meant, your clients are meant for you when it's, when it's time. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And I love that because even my last conversation with you, you gave me information I didn't even ask about. So um, I, I see that that is um, a part of who you are. And I think that's what some people are missing, that component, because mm. that invites more income. Of course, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I think people are afraid to give um, because they're like, oh, someone's going to copy and do what I'm going to do. Yeah, and true. yes, yeah. you do have to be mindful, be very careful, the information you give people, because there are people that can hear what you're doing, regurgitate yeah. and give it to somebody who can implement. The yeah. only thing I will say is like, they're not you, like you got the sauce. Cause like yep. we could all get the same recipe for spaghetti, all like <laughs> you and I could get the exact same recipe handed to us in a card and are told to follow it. Your taste buds, my taste buds are different. Our mm -hmm. heritage background are different. You may like more spice. I don't really like spice. So, you know, our spaghetti is gonna taste very different even mm -hmm. though we got the same recipe. That, and what that tells me is no one can do it like you. So they can copy. Yeah, but it's never going to be what you would have made it. And once I learned that years ago, I was like, go ahead and do it. It's OK. Yeah, it's yeah. OK, because it ain't me. And mm -hmm. you're not going to get my flair, my take, my my creative intelligence, yep. my sure. contacts. You're not going to get me. So it's all good. Absolutely. I think, yeah, sometimes you have to give some things away to receive. Absolutely. I, I strongly Absolutely. believe that. You were talking about sponsorships earlier and just noticing that some, when clients come to you, sometimes they're missing the key pieces to secure sponsorships. So can you tell me what brands are looking for uh, to, to, to get them to say yes? What should we include? Well, it's hard to say exactly what brands are looking for because every brand's MO is different. Right, One right. of the key things we need to do, not even just regardless, regarding just our brands, mm -hmm. it's also regarding um, our audience. We need to start asking, what yeah. is it that you're, that you're looking for? How do you participate in marketing? How do you participate in influencers? What are your marketing strategies and tactics like for this year? Yeah, that's a big thing. But what thing, there are some common things that brands are looking for. They're looking for data. So audience data in particular, who is your audience, their genetic makeup, their race, demographic, buying power, income, age. They're looking for those type of stats and statistics. They're looking for um, if you have an email database or social, um, you know, what is your response like on social media? Do you get clicks? Like, so share some of your screenshots. If you know you have a 15 or 25% email open rate with your email campaigns, share those analytics because mm -hmm. they want to know they might feel like, okay, you know what? Your email rate is real good. We want to do some campaigns in your email because we know we're going to get a click through. So yeah. those are the, there's that data. Um, if you've done an event or project before or something similar and you have social proof, include video and photo within your presentation, um, high quality video and, and photo. And then what they're looking for is activation. It's not really numbers right now. Everyone's like, people are so stuck on, they want to put in, okay, it costs 5,000, 10,000. You're assuming a client's budget and you're, you may hit up a smaller company and they might see, oh, it's $5,000 to activate. They would really like to participate, but they could only comfortably afford to give you $200 mm -hmm. in cash, but $4,000 in product, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, I don't put monetary um, peers or pillars in my decks anymore. I have it noted on a chart so I know 
how much, or if I do put numbers, I put the overall event budget is a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So they know this is my milestone, but mm-hmm. it's, but my monetary ask and, and contributions are open to suggestion and, and conversation, but it's really putting in the activations. If you're having an event, how can a brand activate? So there's employee interaction, right? Mm-hmm. So you could have a representative from Google or Nike excuse me, come on in and speak on a panel, moderate a panel, be a fireside, lead a workshop. Those are four opportunities to get a brand to actually participate, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's, okay, we have gift bags. Um, We have a stage. So then can the stage be wrapped or branded in Grand Marnier colors? You know, there's, you have to, we're giving an award. So can this award be, you know, each award category could be sponsored by a specific company, mm-hmm. all state sponsors, you know, the track and field award or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And then you have the social aspect of it. It is, it is common ground now that every brand gets um, logo mentioned on a website, mentioned in a press release, you know, uh, those things, those old things, that tickets to the event, those things that used to be worth money, that's null and void. That's a common everybody gets. Now right. what it t- changes into is, okay, social campaign. So we're going to create the actual video of, cele- of, of our guests coming out of the, you know, the Jaguar Jeeps at our event, or, you know, we're going to create this many reels. You're going to have this much. You really have to break down your social promotion or our host, all of our hosts are going to wear clothes from pretty little things or everyone's going to have bumble cups on their desk during the virtual summit you really have to map out how the brand is seen so it's really all about product placement now product and and brand placement so it's really I call that activation mapping I really look at how a brand can actually fit in and a lot of it is like I'll pitch a brand and be like, here's some of the ways that we think we, you could best activate with us. We love you in our gift bags, but we're also doing a bodega. So we would love to know if you want to pop up or a midnight snack bar. And then we'll have a conversation with them and, and ask them and they'll tell us, you know, we're really trying to focus on millennials right now. And we have a program. Great. We could implement and do, you know, one of your sessions during our event. We'll make it work in the schedule. Mm-hmm. So, so it's down- really a conversation. Perfect. So when you say activate, break that down for the layman person that doesn't know anything about, you know, this world. Yeah. So activate means how does a brand actively participate with your audience at your event, whether it be in person or virtual. So activate meaning whether it's Peloton and Peloton's coming and setting up bikes that Mm. people can try. Um, If it's LinkedIn doing a photo, LinkedIn's going to offer a portrait studio. So that means, okay, LinkedIn, everybody that comes gets two, three headshots provided from LinkedIn, but that means LinkedIn ends up getting their emails. Like, how does a brand par- actively participate in your event? Absolutely. And it, sounds and it like could, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was saying like it's sponsored brand products could be in our, the brand is activating in our gift bag, but that means you're going to have your videographer or photographer um, take video and photo of an influencer opening mm-hmm. their gift bag. You know right. what I mean? And right. holding and taking products, like even at your events, your shot list, is extremely important because you told brands, oh, we're going to have pictures and stuff like that. Make sure you get photos. So every brand that I secure, yes, if I have a shot list that for that brand and my photographers and videographers know, here are the key things you have to take and then take whatever else you want creative wise is fine. But mm-hmm. if it's liquor, I need to see pictures of the liquor bottle. I need to see the bartender pour a video of the bartender mixing a drink, pouring the liquor, girls clinking their glasses. Like you need to think editorial. You need to think it has to be social ready. So what can I capture that can automatically go up on my Instagram that that brand will share? Absolutely. It sounds like a lot of work. (laughs) It is. It is not easy. And then pitching is also hard because- You know, you it's I have a lot of warm contacts, meaning people that I know personally that work and manage brands. I do. I also do pitch cold contacts, meaning people I've never heard of, never worked with before. I'm just pitching to start a relationship. You got to give yourself time because, you know, if your events next month, I'm not saying not to pitch for sponsorship, but the likelihood of you getting something or getting a response is very far. It's very far and few. 
Mm-hmm. So give yourself time, but you also got to give yourself time to build relationships. Like I pitched a major brand back in September. They're now just getting back to me, the events in three weeks from now, and they're still deciding mm. what they want to do. And right. I can't, I could only move as fast as they move. Right? right. Yeah. So it's, it is a lot of work and sponsorship media placements I tell all of my clients even event inclusion which is like you want to go to the Grammys or something I would pitch my clients for attendance I tell them it's never guaranteed because I don't have that buying power if someone tells you oh no I'm I'm confident we're gonna get um Red Bull unless unless they're 100% sure like I only tell people we can secure that if the brand is my is is a personal client of mine Mm -hmm. Um, or I'm managing, um, I'm managing that brand and I've managed a few brands before. I'm like, oh yeah, I can give you a couple hundred watches. It's fine. Until, unless it's one of those two things, I don't guarantee anything because I know a lot of people at magazines. I know owners, one of my clients is a digital magazine Mm -hmm. and I talk to him every day and he tells me no every day (laughs) on certain, like on certain clients. I'm like, oh, we should interview. No. I'm like, oh. Okay. I mean, now, so I just, I just do it anyway. And then I'm like, let me just did it. But it's like, still at the end of the day, they have the power to say no. Right. So what you're paying for when you pay a sponsorship person or a publicist is for their time, the, uh, the dedication to creating the right materials and then the outreach, because it's a lot of work, constant emails, constant follow-up, constant sitting on the phone, doing revisions, sending it back to get it approved. And brands can approve and then unapprove right away. And it's happened. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times. Yeah. Wow. So that, that sounds major. So mm. in, in your experience working with brands and entrepreneurs, what is a myth that we need to dispel when it comes to, you know, how event planning actually works? Uh, that is easy and that everybody can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody can execute an event. Anybody can plan. Mm-hmm. but not everybody can execute a well-rounded event. Right. Um, and it requires a team. It requires um, uh, somebody who can look at multiple lenses because yeah. people do events and you do all this pre-focus on your social with all your promoting, but then during the day, you're forgetting to post during the day yeah. of your event. You yeah. need a social media manager. Yeah. Um, day of, of your event, even if it's virtual, you need somebody that's dedicated to reposting all of the stuff that your audience is sharing, downloading and saving that because all that's going to go to your reporting, but also posting what's coming up and posting quotes and then either monitoring the comments if it's virtual, you know, um, planning events isn't easy and you spend months planning something that ends in hours. And when you look at it that way, you spend yeah. months planning something that ends within a matter of hours. Yeah. And then once it's done, you're like, what how ha- like you you feel beside yourself because for yeah. the last four or five months, this is all you've been doing. It's planning yeah. this event. Mm-hmm. And then it's gone and you just don't know what to do with yourself. It's very stressful. Um, take a break. Like I tell all my clients right after an event, I don't do anything for another month, depending on the client. Like I won't, if I, when I hosted my own events, I literally, after I sent out the report, I'm chilling for a month. I don't want to think about an event because my body and my mind need to recuperate. Yeah. But, uh, yeah it's not easy. And, uh, you know, uh, managing guest lists and now with COVID, you have to be all these extra precautions. Now you have to take. Well, absolutely. I can only imagine that it adds like an extra layer of, of, um, you know, work, you know, that you have to go through that you have to work through. You have no choice, right? Absolutely. So what's it been like for you as a black woman in Canada operating in this space? Cause I can imagine, as you said, you felt out of place initially. Um, it's been interesting because I will say this nowhere that I've worked, I felt um, inferior by any yeah. means. All of my, all of my um, 
people that I've worked with have treated me well. I didn't experience like, you know, racism um, or any of those things in that degree. However, Mm -hmm. I will say, you know, being an outsider, someone who didn't come from the industry, uh, you know, it's, it was apparent when I didn't know things or didn't understand things like kind of scoffed at. Um, I will say for majority of the agencies I've worked with, professionally I've always been the only black woman Mm -hmm. black person um, for a majority of them or black woman and so it's been interesting especially working in beauty PR when all the products are coming in for white women or you know women are not my complexion and I'm supposed to authentically promote this product and I I'm not one of those type of people that could just blind promote yeah what's the job you just to market it no 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 because you will read it It was like well yeah this product works and I can't authentically give you a review because I can't use it so it was interesting um you know trying to figure out that balance uh working in agencies where they're putting me on projects because the project is pretty much black led but I'm just like so are you putting this me on this because I'm black or because I'm qualified to lead this project right you know and I've had to have those hard conversations I'm like you know a couple films I worked I'm like I'm not gay I have nothing against the gay LGBTQ community but I'm not gay Mm -hmm. so I don't understand that struggle I'm not American black Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's another another struggle and I'm also not a man so you know what are we what are we doing here so you know I've had to have those conversations but it's um it's been interesting because, you know, we're passionate people and uh, sometimes like, oh, you're really angry. Am I angry or am I just, am I just strong with my opinion? Yeah. Or am I just standing firm in what I believe? Right. So, you know, there's a few of those small stereotypes that I've had to overcome, but for the most part, I've always just, uh, I just believe if you do the work and you do, if you show up authentically you and you do what's in your best capabilities, you will shine. Absolutely. And I believe just from watching you, I believe like you make things look so easy and effortless So <laughs> that could confuse people to make them think it's, it's all easy breezy over here. Well, because I've done it for so long now. And I tell clients, even when I get on the phone with them, I now have learned, I overwhelm people. Yeah. Overwhelm in a way of you'll come to me with one thing and I'm like, okay, well, where you're you want to be here but you're really here and Mm -hmm. here's where we have to go and I am learning to slow down a bit because for me I do this so much and I can dissect very I dissect a lot because it's part of my industry so I've realized that even when I'm talking to clients they're just or people they're just like you're speaking a whole nother language and I'm just like if you don't understand tell me to stop tell me to slow down I just go because yeah. I do this daily. So it's become right, yeah. repetitive and routine, just like anybody in their own field, you would do this. And I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, this is a lot, but <laughs> yeah. for you, you've overcome that hurdle because it's now ingrained in you. But, um, it, it, it's some, there's sometimes where uh, I'll say this social media makes everything look easy because we only show the end result. Mm-hmm. We show the final product of what we've created, what we wanted to do, right? Yep. Um, where you're not seeing the the work, the hours in between, the, the crying, the moving boxes, the, <laughs> yeah. you know, rewriting this release 10 times. Um, your client, you finish the deck, the client wants to switch it. You're not seeing any of that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. There's a whole lot of work for sure. So what is a, what does a job well done look like for you? Uh, what does a job well done look like for me? Yeah. A job well done looks like happy clients. Um, when I do decks in particular, I have this personal rule. Um, under five edits means we hit the mark. Anything over five means we missed it or um, the client has changed direction, which tends to happen. But a job well done, I would say, is a happy client, a referring client, Um and, and something that I'm proud to show, like when I get geeked out and be like, oh my God, I did that. Yeah. Like, that was me. Like what? <laughs> like sometimes I look back at some of the decks that I've created and I'm just like, wow, you wow. I'm like, this is really good. <laughs> like I'm sitting here and I'm just like, okay. You know, or like when you see, um, like for instance, I interviewed Spice, um, the yes. dance hall artist, yeah. um, 
last week and or two weeks ago now and what was crazy is after the interview she was like this was a really great interview and I've interviewed people multitude of times and I wasn't mm-hmm. intended to interview her the agent the client I'm working for they couldn't do it so they're like do you know who she is I'm like of course and they're like can you interview her so it's just really nice when people in prominent positions um, who don't know you, don't know your background, don't know anything about you, are, are oddly pleased with the conversation yeah. and they're excited. And I've had that a few times now where I've interviewed somebody and they weren't sure. And then we end up off the call and they were like, this was really insightful. So yeah. like, you really, you really, you had some really great questions and, you know, I enjoyed the conversation. So that's always a, a good thing or like, I leave, client leaves the call with me and they didn't book me because I couldn't book. I don't have a service or don't have the time yeah. or we just realized it didn't work, but they are, they're like, you know what? I got off the call with you and I had, I felt, I felt so good. And I, I had like, you know, I felt a lot better or I feel like I had a lot of work to do, but I felt more confident, you know, those things um, are what I look for. It's like, as long as you feel like I helped you, in some way shape or form or you feel good about what we did that's kind of it for me you know yeah absolutely and that's what it's all about and you know you do you you're very well spoken you've been in the industry around you know PR like you understand all aspects all aspects of that so your interviewing skills I'm sure are are on par because I did see a piece of that spice interview and I I was like yes (laughs) (laughs) so that's amazing. <laughs> you know, you can go in any direction and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. What does, what does wind down look for you? Like look like for you. So you're done a major event. You're, you're off for the month. What are you doing aside from not working with clients? Uh, not answering my phone. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, like, for me, a wind down for me is when I actually don't touch my computer or phone yeah. because my friends will tell you I'm always working like Jackie's always working Jax are you on your computer Uh, a lot of people don't understand when you work for yourself yeah um I don't I can't just you know I'm not in a position yet um where I could just you know dick off and be like ah the money's gonna come I know there's clients that pay a retainer and whatever but it's just like I just I don't know how to relax and being still sometimes I'm like "Mm, where's my laptop there should be something I should be doing right so wind down for me is like not even touching my computer, like very minimal touching it, you know, and just really being in the moment. Um, Wind down for me is going for walks. I love nature. Mm -hmm. So I go for walks consistently. Um, Yeah, but yeah, a wind down for me is when when my computer and phone are non-existent. Perfect. I I love the way that sounds because like you, I don't know how to like sit down and do nothing. It's like, there must be something for me to do. And then (laughs) you cry foul because, you know, you get so tired, but Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Jackie, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I this has been so informative. I swear we could have another episode because I have I have many questions. <laughs> well, but, I'm uh, down for a part two. So let me <laughs> okay, know. okay, okay. Thank you so much. I we're booking you from now. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for having me. This was You're amazing. More welcome. You're more than welcome. Take care and we'll talk another time. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, as all these things help to keep the podcast alive. Take care. Until next time.